What's good, Fizz fam? I'm now on the way to see my surgeon because I don't want anyone to be worried. Everything is fine, but I have a lump in my breast and I'm now gonna be seeing the surgeon about some surgery that I'm gonna be having on it. So I'm gonna be vlogging today and sharing all of the details and updating you on it, everything. And I just wanted to say, just don't be worried, anyone. Everything is fine, but I do have to have some surgery. I've also been speaking about this on Instagram. So if you wanna check out my highlights on there and find out any more information about my journey, about having an explant, surgery and fat transfer you can find it all on there but if you're new if this news is new to you I can give you a little bit of a backstory in this vlog but this has been a, something that has been happening a journey for the last two years so when we came back to the UK I had surgery to have my 15 year old breast implants removed I decided I didn't want to have them anymore they were very old and then they would I needed to have some new surgery to have basically I would have had to need to have them replaced or taken out anyway so I decided to have them taken out and have a fat transfer transfer instead which is basically where you have fat removed from other parts of your body and you have it placed in your breast to give it the fullness and it's like a better alternative to having breast implants because it's your own fat as opposed to some big like balls of plastic essentially I've been very happy with it until I found a big lump in my breast about the size of a golf ball I'm now about to arrive to the hospital so I've got to get in the right headspace and I've got to speak to the surgeon all about the surgery and everything like that but I'm going to keep you updated and share everything in this vlog Hi. 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 Are you See going later. as well, Mia? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You support mum, yeah. Yeah. Thank All you. Right. See, See you later. Bit. Everything's fine. Love you. Love you too. Bye. Bye. You're coming with me, Mia. All right. Mia's my big baby, and she's coming to support her mummy. <laughs> Your little wing, wing woman. Yeah. Well, I I don't know why I feel so nervous. I have actually Aww. been to the hospital loads of times, and I've seen the surgeon, and everything is fine. But I just feel like really nervous about All it because. Right. I'm it probably going to be having surgery this month and I wasn't really planning on having any more. So I'm going to speak to the surgeon about if the surgery is going to happen, if I've got enough fat, if he's going to, what he's going to do with the lump. And I don't know why it's just like, it's kicking in now. Like I think it's because you realise that this appointment's actually really important because you've actually got to say everything and like yeah. make all the decisions on this appointment. So it's kind of like almost more scary than the actual thing. Yeah. Because this, this is what affects the actual surgery. Yeah, this isn't a consultation. This is actually like talking about the surgery. Anyway, we're now here. I'm in the waiting room right now and I'm drooling over these pictures. Mom. No, I'm not really near as... <laughs> in the waiting room, there's all these like pictures of like men's chests and abs and things. Anyway, we are an aesthetics clinic and you know. We've got to show the aesthetics of the human body. Yeah, so yeah, you might have to come into the appointment with me and Oh. See me get measured up and stuff. No, I want to be there for you. Yeah. I mean, nothing could be worse than watching you give birth. Yeah. <laughs> She's joking, guys. I, I wanted to be there. No, she did. We all wanted to be there. She did throw up after I gave birth, though, to Karma. Only on the first one. Yeah, she was nervous. If you don't know what we're talking about um, with Karma and Koa's birth, we, I had home birth. I say we because the whole family was there. Um, and it was the most magical thing ever. It was really, really nice. If you haven't seen them, check them out. Is this where you actually came, like, when you got the surgery as well? Or what, was the it... original one when I was 20? Yeah. yeah so... no, 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 no. Like, last year? Yeah. Like, is this also the hospital where you get it done not just for the appointment no last year i couldn't have i didn't have the actual surgery here that was in another hospital but oh. the clinic is here oh okay the clinic so when you the get the surgery will you come here or a different place i'm going to come to this hospital oh okay yeah yes that would be handy when i was like 20 that's when i had my first ever surgery and i had the breast implants and then like when was it 20 2022 yeah yeah and then in 2022 I had them removed and now it's almost like, is it a year later? Thanks. So. Really, oh, I don't I, know. I, I After don't know. 2020, like all the years just yeah. blend together. That is actually like a phenomenon. I've seen people talking yeah. about it. Yeah. How like 2017 sounds like it's three years ago, but no, it's actually seven years ago. Yeah, I think the same. 2020 is four years ago. Can you believe that? No, I can't. I know. So it was like it was last year. It was quite a while ago, over a year ago when I had them removed. And then it was nine months after having the fat transfer that I discovered a lump in my boob because every night I'd massage oil on them to keep the skin all nice and all healthy. And then, you know what you do, you rub an old body lotion in. And then I just felt like a lump there. And I was like, oh no, what is that? I didn't feel worried about it being anything like dangerous, but I was really annoyed because I was like, I think 
I've got a fat lump, which is something that can happen after having a fat transfer, which is basically like where some of the fat has like died and then it goes all lumpy, which is kind of not what you want in your boob. That's really freaky. So when I went to see the surgeon after I found that out, he said that I've got like an oil cyst. So basically, uh, in my breast, I have a giant, giant so oil freaky. cyst. But he's now going to check it out today and see it and see if he's able to remove it. Um, I did even have a scan to see, just to check it is that. <sighs> That's I know. Actually they could drain it with oh, a needle. Oh, no. Sorry no. if this is gross, but oh. it can just come back again. So I am just want to get it removed. And then I'm thinking what about having another. Again, though, Mom? I don't know. Well, there's loads of things that I'm going to put into place to make sure that doesn't happen. But I need to see him all about this today, about removing it and then also having another fat transfer because when they remove the lump me and there's probably gonna be a big like hole there, like gap. Oh, yeah. And then also, as I'm gonna be having surgery, I might as well. How big is the golf ball? The golf ball's actually well it's big. It's huge, it's very, very big. But then I need to think about, hang on, I'm just, I keep thinking the surgeon is there. I feel embarrassed to like vlog in here. And then- um, I'm just traumatized thinking about a golf ball. I know, it feels kind of like not nice. Like it's not okay. nice to have that feeling. No, that must not be nice to have that like in your body. That would yeah. freak me out so much. Okay, there's loads of men in the waiting room now. I'm gonna stop talking. I'm talking yeah, about which bits yeah. she's gonna get removed to put into her yeah, chest. Yeah. The doctor just said something that's really interesting is men always think that they're thinner than they are and women always think that they have more fat. So it's an interesting thing about like men and women's different mindsets. Also, there's more of the pictures. I think, I think I can show you that one, but I definitely cannot show you the other one. It's luckily it's a woman picture, but still. Just said about scraping fat out. That's the muscles. Okay. Scraping fat out. I would like that just removed and not um, replaced. The reason for that is I feel like the fat cells probably don't like. No. My body don't. My body doesn't like them, so I think I don't want to risk no, it that's again. Not. I mean, yeah. just all we're going to do is make that little same scar again. Yeah. And then it just pop it out. We're just waiting for the surgeon to come back in the room. So I just asked if I'm allowed to have gel polish on when I have my surgery. I was more thinking about if it flakes off and then it oh, goes into no, the no. incision. Oof. But he's more thinking when I'm um, the anaesthetist, when they put the, what did he say? The heart monitor on your finger. Yeah, something like will that. it be Blood able to work. go through the gel? But he said it can go through bone, but he's now gonna check. So yeah. that's my only But maybe question. like gel is a bit plasticky, so yeah. it's different. Because I know that you have all your piercings out, but if there's some that you can't have taken out, because obviously I have a couple here, which are quite difficult to take out. I think they can put plaster on it. That's good. But I just wanted to check about this because I wanted to get yeah. my nails done before, so I felt nice. Yeah, yeah, I So I, I just checking, if you get, if I get them done before and then I arrive and they're like, sorry, you're not allowed to have your nails painted, that'd be disappointing. Oh, that so will be an... we're just yeah. checking. And it will also be really annoying. Yeah. It's like, what can you do? So the surgeon just checked, felt all over my body to see how much fat I've got on it for the fat transfer. Because if you don't have enough, then like what there's gonna not going to be anything to do. <laughs> I think there's enough. He said there isn't, but I, I can fill areas. You could ask dad to donate some. <laughs> no, you can't do that. That's disgusting. <laughs> and then he just said to me that he's going to make an incision and pop. I'm not saying dad's fat, by the no. way. I just realized the way that could be taken. And then he also just said he's going to make an incision and pop it out where I had the incision before to have the breast implant removed. And then he's not going to be using the fat in the oil cyst for the new fat transfer I started because he did mention that before that is a possibility because if I don't have enough fat he might be able to reuse some of that but I think because my body's already rejected that fat mm. and turned it into a cyst I don't think I should be risk I should yeah. risk reusing it because I feel like those cells my body doesn't agree with or doesn't like yeah it sounds good I feel a bit better now I've talked to him yeah but I was just showing areas on my body where I felt like there would be fat and he's saying if you remove that then we'll just have loose hanging skin <laughs> So. Probably best not to. Yeah. Just popped into Sephora quickly and I'm looking at all the minis because I'm going to be travelling soon and unfortunately it coincides with mum's surgery day and I actually booked the holiday first and I told when mum told mum when it was going to be so don't worry I didn't just book a holiday while mum's getting surgery and then yeah so I feel a bit bad about that I'm not actually going to be there when she gets it done. She's going to be fine though I'm not I'm not going to worry about it. I just so I just yeah. I was looking at the minis. Olaplex Bond Moisture Mask just because my hair the ends of my my hair really dry since we come back from holiday oh. and I'm trying to grow my hair out but Darren's now going to be picking us up so that's why we've come in here because I went out <laughs> really without a coat on. It's freezing well, I was just since telling the first time about how I'm actually not even going to be here when you get your surgery. I know but that's fine though. I don't I need know to... but I still feel bad about it. Why? But I'm fine. I know. Darren's going to look after me. Oh my gosh that's not amazing. 
Sienna's got this. I, I know, and it's properly. so good. It's not actually like the other texture of the body creams. This one's like really thick. It's actually like a butter. It looks so edible. Like I, I really, I really want the spray really want though. Is the it. spray available? I don't know. No. It's not available. But yeah, guys, I'm excited to try this. I want to do a hair mask tonight. I'm going to do loads of pampering and prep <laughs> yeah. before I have the surgery. Early to kind of get my body all healthy and prepared. Anyway, yeah. let's, let's go outside for the dog. Thank let's you. See if we can bye. Bye. Thank you, bye. I'm just finding it really funny how mum, in the voice note to dad, she was like, yeah, we're just going to wait in Starbucks when Starbucks. Why would we go in Starbucks when there's Space NK? We literally just came out of Space NK and then you're here Hi. to pick us up. Thank you. It is freezing outside, so thank you for rescuing us. But I've got good news. Okay. The surgeon is going to be able to remove the lump. Yeah. He just said he said that he'd be able to make a small incision and pop it out. And I said, I asked him, can <laughs> I see a full? It makes it sound like so yeah. <laughs> simple, but just yeah. like. Once you've had babies, though, it does like toughen you up for things like yeah, this. Yeah. Like if you've given Still, birth. Still, a baby is like natural. This is not yeah. natural. I do get it, but obviously back when I was 20, like I wasn't really thinking about the future or my body and you know everything happens for a reason so this has been a really good journey of me about learning about my body and just just life in general anyway so um what was i gonna say yeah so he said it's really simple okay. and um he said that it's just gonna be a small incision and he can remove it and i i asked okay. you're gonna love this but i said can i see a photo of it because i'm one of those people that really like oh looking at things why? like that no you shouldn't oh i really want to know what no, it looks like i feel so big i want to no, see what it looks like don't focus no. on it okay right okay i won't i won't ask for the photo but after i had my breast implants removed i did ask to keep them because i thought it would be like an educational tool and i really just wanted to know like see the reality of what was going on and every now and then i get them out and i hold them and i can't believe the weight of them that i was carrying that in my body so not as in like it's a scheduled event but it's just when you come across them in the drawer isn't yeah it? <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah, every, three like like every three months every three months once a month i reminisce yeah. and i pick them no, up no <laughs> but if i open the drawer up i look at them i go oh yeah what are those funny little things in there and like yeah. i pick up and go oh they're so heavy how did my body do that like the how body's so magical marathons yeah like yeah. lit how did you run a yeah. sub three hour marathon with yeah. those things inside you it's crazy and then also so i've had the lump bit confirmed but then of course because i'm going to be going having surgery to have uh, the lump removed i also not only am i going to have like an empty space there i also feel like it would be nice to have another top up and then i feel like this will be the last time that i have anything done because i feel like some people do it is quite common to have an, another round of fat transfer and if i hadn't have had the lump i don't think i would have bothered i'd just been happy with how they are so he checked my body to to see what my body composition is like if i've got enough fat and as you probably heard i was pointing out all of these areas to him where you know as women we can be quite critical of our body i'm like i've got a lot of fat there and he's like if i remove any of the fat from there it's literally just gonna be pure skin and i'm gonna be doing a skin graft he was really laughing so he was like you're meant to have a bit of fat underneath your skin so that the skin can stay alive <laughs> yeah. so it's not normal to have no fat on you he was like laughing yeah. at me but i but because I'm obviously having the operation. I'm pointing out all these areas just to show him. Can you get remover from here and there? So then it's like successful. I guess you so, just want enough to fill the yeah. space that's going yeah. to be created. Yeah. So he was hoping that over Christmas I'd be able to gain some weight, and I'd feel like my body's just kind of stayed the same. But I do have a lot of areas naturally where I've got a lot of fat stored, so I will be able to have a fat transfer but it's not going to be a huge dramatic result like it's not going to be like i'm having like my chest could be dramatically bigger but, but you don't want that anyway do no you? i don't want that anyway i you like the size the it ball. but it will just be yeah filling yeah. the golf ball you know the bowl where the ball's going to be removed and then also i have lost some volume since the last operation which is a natural occurrence after fat transfer not all the fat cells remain but of course i don't want to repeat the same thing and have another lump and i feel like there's some things that i did after the surgery that i could do a bit differently now i eat very healthily i look after myself but i felt like i was very inactive afterwards so obviously when the time is right and i feel like i've got my strength back after my operation i think i'm going to do more exercise but then also there's another thing which coincidentally arrived today which i'm going to be using it's some very advanced technology it's taken up nearly half of our bedroom and when we get back <laughs> i will show you it's some it's some futuristic 
biohacking technology which all of the top athletes are using so I'm very excited to be able to try it out and Darren treated me to it didn't you? Well, you Darren did his research and he's said, ordered like, it. What it was gonna, like how many appointments you needed for it and then you said you had to go there twice a day and obviously you're going to be repairing from an operation and it actually yeah. works out more cost effective to rent one and have it at home. Anyway. Yeah so Darren's rent, rented a special machine rather than me having to go and have this anyway I'll show you when we get home so then you know what we're talking about but it's very interesting Fizz Farm and the aesthetics of the bedroom has changed a lot. <laughs> Um, Hello. Maybe. Are you ready, Fizz fan? Yeah. Ready? Here is the all new hyperbaric oxygen therapy chamber. Ooh, it looks like it will take you to space. <laughs> I know it looks good. Look. Oh, no, it's a submarine. It's got like the pressure gauge. And <laughs> I haven't used stuff. it yet. It literally came this morning. I don't know what to do with it. Dan, you've had a little um, talk with the guy about how to use it because it does actually increase like oxygen pressure or something in here and it can explode. No, it cannot explode. Don't stop saying that. Okay. Yeah, he showed me a demonstration. Basically, it's going to go way bigger. This is going to. What? Really? It, you lay like, well, as in, it. as in, it just fills up. Imagine oh. like a balloon blown up. You yeah. basically That's lay all. inside it and then it zips up and then pure oxygen fills this tank and the pure oxygen is really healing. It helps with wound healing. It helps mm. with stopping the fat cells from dying. It's actually, there's been loads of studies showing that post fat transfer surgery, it can help most of the fat cells survive or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so there's yeah, like a machine it. here, that one, which Ooh. sucks air into it and then just takes out the pure oxygen and then it puts it in yeah, there. Yeah, and this is really popular with athletes and like like people who have injuries and sports, boxers use it and it's been really, really helpful. And also the elderly as well. In hospitals, they do have something similar to this and it helps with like... Come on, who remembers oh, Mia's yeah, video? Who remembers well, Mia's I'm video? But I'm literally the hyperbaric oxygen therapy expert. I've been going <laughs> She's the OG. Therapy hyperbaric, hyperbaric expert. Mia had it because Since I was 14 or 15. You were trying out loads of different things, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, I made a fun. whole YouTube video about and it. And also to see ago. if it could help with um, acne because the oxygen is so good for your body. So I'm hoping yeah. that this will, will not only help me recover faster from the surgery and my wounds heal better, but then also hopefully I don't have another huge giant oil cyst. For and she's got this thing about submarines. So she wanted to get it and like pretend she's going to yeah. boop. Boop, and pretend she's going down every time. So I feel like we should- Hang on, sorry Georgie, but I just realized we're gonna see you. You're gonna be waving out yeah. of here. I wanna That's say- what I mean, it's literally a submarine. I will though. demonstrate its use. I reckon after the surgery, you should film a vlog about my routine post-surgery, and mm. I definitely need to try it out. Comment down below if you want to see me go in the submarine. I do. Yeah, so it blows up and it goes really hard. And then you've got these gauges. This is going to go up to 40, the man said, on yeah. that gauge. So this is one of the things that I'm going to be doing post-surgery to help my the health, the success afterwards. And then also I'm going to try and move more and I'm obviously going to do all the other healthy protocol measures such as good sleep and eating healthy healthily. Protocol but, and it helps with just actually healing anyway. Yeah, so. this is just good for general, like, health. Yeah. Isn't it? You don't just need to like go in it if you're an old person or an athlete. Like, and then now our bedroom literally looks like a health clinic it's because we also have the red light sauna. So this is a red light sauna. I probably won't be using this afterwards because this is like one what you're meant to sweat in. And obviously I don't think my wound should be getting sweaty and wet. And also I don't, I'm not sure if some of the fat cells might sweat out. I don't know about that. I don't feel like I should be using that. However, I've got something in our toilet. We've got a right biohacking suite up here. In the toilet, we've already shown you this anyway, haven't we, in one of our morning routines but in here do you behind, turn it on hold on yeah behind here this is this is like the toilet room but this is where we use red light therapy so the other one is like a hot heat but this is like a kind of just a, a light heat does that make sense no it's just light there's no heat it's got a slight bit of warmth but it doesn't make you sweat this is really good for healing and your skin and energizing your body and all your mitochondria we're getting so geeky right now so this will be be perfect for my scars if I get any scars, won't it? From all of having the fat transfer under my breast. So I feel like this is going to be something that I can use. But also like, currently oh, looks sorry, like you're on Mars. Up. Yeah, but like I just said, I will keep you updated, Fizz fam. We're obviously going to film a vlog of the surgery as well, because there's a big life event. And then maybe after the surgery... <laughs> Okay. I fell over. And after surgery, Darren's going to be looking after me. And obviously I'm going to be using all of this. So. If you want to find out more information about my journey so far, there is actually a highlights on my story. And we have, I did make a video ages ago talking about 
like my whole journey of this but thank you for um following me on this journey so far this fan of this. you're going to be following the journey mia yeah i don't yeah. even know what you I'm subscribe saying. to the journey. i'm currently in the waiting room you're in the waiting of room of the clinic okay yeah, mia was literally like gagging and like oh, weren't you in there gagging. she was she was laughing and gagging she couldn't believe it did the fizz fam know that mia was sick when yeah, we talked about born. it. Yeah. We already mentioned this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do feel really nervous, Fizz fan. When I went in, Mia could tell that I was a bit moody and quiet and tense. But now I feel quite relieved I see him because he feel he felt very confident that he was able to deal with the lump and he feels very confident that I'm gonna have enough fat to be able to do it. But it's gonna be coming up soon, Fizz fan, and I do feel nervous about it. But I just wanna get it out of the way and done and dusted. I'm kind of fed up with having this giant golf ball in my chest. It just feels really like just weird and uncomfortable. If I lay on my front, it kind of like digs in. So I just want to get it out of the way. I'm going to do everything I can to prevent it from happening again because I could live with it. He did say it's not dangerous. I could have it there, but it just feels very like just not a nice feeling. I couldn't deal with that. Like my no. brain would just constantly think yeah. about it. It's not getting any bigger, yeah. but it did start off small and then it's got like that, but it hasn't got any more bigger. And and like when I had the scan to, to, for them to check that it was all okay, they did say it's like basically a tiny little f fat cell surrounded by all of this liquidy oil stuff. What, as in like your body's trying to eject it, do you mean, or what? Well, what it's done, it's done, my body has encapsulated the dead fat cells that my body rejected. Oh. And so it's encapsulated. This can happen with breast implants as well. They can become, your body, anything in your body that your, bo that your body doesn't like and it wants to deal with, sometimes your body will deal with it by encapsulating it. Like set, like, like it literally sweeps it under up, the rug. Sweeps it under the yeah, rug, and yeah. I think that is clever that the body does that. But sometimes it would be better if it was eliminated from the body. Sure. I don't. That, it it could be ca causing low level inflammation. It could. I don't know. So I feel like for me personally, I do just want to get it out of the way, so out of, my, out of mind. And this is one of obviously the side effects of having a fat transfer. So obviously a fat transfer is a better alternative, in my opinion, to having the silicone or the what do you call it the saline implants because they are like plastic and everything in your body but the fat transfer also does have its side effects as well and it is major mm -hmm. surgery still and in, in a way just being happy with your natural body is obviously a lot better but some women do choose to have these things so this is i never expected it would happen to me when i read some of the side effects of fat transfer i didn't think this would happen and it literally happened nine months afterwards and it took me by surprise and it made me feel a little bit defeated and disappointed because i am like i consider myself a healthy person and i was not expecting it but some positive news is sienna's gonna be doing cheerleading and she's gonna be starting it for the first time so that vlog is gonna be coming out soon on fizz and then also keep your eyes out for the surgery video and also we're gonna be bringing out a really cool video on family fizz to start off the new year so make sure you subscribe Got your notifications on, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.